Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Update. It's the 13th of September. Happy Friday the 13th, as always. I have the chapters, so you can jump to any particular update. New videos this week. I posted a little LinkedIn article about the top five fundamental foundational security things every company should do. So I created a little video version of that. Really just not mind blowing stuff, but certainly things everyone should be doing. And then a super little video on if you have a YouTube channel, it's now really easy to create a QR code that helps people find your channel. And there is a warning in that. In your general day to day life, be careful of QR codes. Lots of bad actors are now in public places putting stickers over valid QR codes that take you somewhere bad. So always exercise caution when you go and take a picture of a QR code. Make sure you pay attention to where it's actually taking you. So on to what's new on the compute side. Azure Functions now have PowerShell 7.4 support. So Azure Functions are actually a really nice way to call PowerShell. If I have some automation, be it a schedule based on some trigger, which could be a time event or something happens somewhere, can use a event grid for that as well. Um, now I can use PowerShell 7.4. Logic Apps Standard now has native document parsing and chunking. So if I think about the nice workflow and lots of built-in actions I have with Logic Apps, when I deal with AI, very commonly I need to parse and tokenize a document. We use the tokens that represent maybe word or part of a word or a symbol. And also we have a limit to how many tokens we can leverage at any one time. So we have to chunk our data into things of a certain token size. So now with Logic App Standards, we have these data operations that include parse a document and chunk text. So parsing will transform your PDF files, CSVs, a bunch of other formats into a tokenized string, which I could then use for many AI related type APIs. And also I can use the chunk text if I need it within a certain number of tokens. So that's a really nice thing in preview. Azure Container Apps, which remember is that abstracted Azure Kubernetes service, but I don't have to worry about AKS, but it adds things like Dapper for better microservice capabilities. It adds Keda for better um, scaling, networking capabilities from networking sidecars, et cetera, et cetera. Well, now it has a bunch of managed Java components as well. So if I want to be able to utilize those, I think Spring Cloud Service Registry so I can go and find different services. Spring Cloud Config Server to externally manage application configurations. Spring Boot Admin for metrics, and various types of dumps. Um, that is now all available in Azure Container Apps. On to the networking side. So App Gateway V2 Basic Skewers Gone GA. It's really more for the small, medium sized customers. Oh, where's that gone? Go on, go forward. There we go. Let's go forward again. Come on, click on the link. There we go. So if we go and look at what it does, it's more this small medium size, but you can see I have a slightly lower SLA, it's three nines instead of 99.95, but I still have all of the core functionality, cookie affinity, um, path-based affinity, multi-site, et cetera, et cetera. But then you don't get the advanced. So URL rewrite, uh, mutual, TLS, private link support, private only, TCP TLS. There's less connections, there's less listeners, et cetera, et cetera. I get less throughput, less number of connections per second per compute unit. But if I'm more on the small medium size, if I have less traffic, if I have lower SLA requirements, and I don't require those more automatic scale, the higher traffic management features, um, that could be a great option. And obviously you, you optimize your cost there. Next. Azure Firewall now has private IP DNAT, destination network address translation in preview. Now, ordinarily we have this on the public IP of Azure Firewall, primarily for the incoming IP traffic. What this is gonna enable me to now do is that IP port translation on its private IP, so the Azure Firewall private IP address. And this can be really useful in a number of scenarios. So maybe I've got overlapping IP networks, which means they wouldn't ordinarily be able to just talk to each other. So there's various patterns I can use with 
the Azure firewall kind of on each side to enable those to now be able to communicate. I might have completely non-routable networks. Maybe there's some VPN in the middle. Again, I can use Azure Firewall to help facilitate that. On the storage side, so premium SSD V2 and ultra disk, remember both of those share a similar architecture. They let me separately specify the IOPS and throughput from the capacity. They let me dynamically change the IOPS and the throughput as I'm using the disk. Well, now they have live disk resize in preview. Now this is increasing the size. Really in Azure, I can never decrease the size of a disk. I basically need to create a new one and copy the stuff over, but I can now live increase. So this would be useful to let me maybe start with a smaller size disk to again, optimize my cost. And then if my needs increase, I can just grow the disk without any impact to my actual application. Now, once I increase the disk, I would then have to go into the OS that's using it and increase the volume size. But now, hey, I can go and do that in preview. On the database side, so SQL database hyperscale elastic pools have gone GA. So the nice thing about elastic pools is it lets me share the resource over a number of databases. So if I had a number of databases that have different seasonality, i.e. they have peak times and slower times, well, if I place databases with complementary seasonality, so while one database has got high usage, the other one is low, and then they kind of switch, well, overall, I can use less resource than if them each having their own dedicated amount of resources. So that's what Elastic Pool is gonna let me do. And of course, hyperscale is the larger scale, higher performance. It separates the compute units from the page servers to let me scale those independently. Um, so now for that really high, big performance, I can still share that um, group of resource. Miscellaneous. So Azure IoT Edge adds a number of new Linux version support. So it's Ubuntu Server 2404, Debian 12, uh, Yocto, Scarf Gap. I can't even say that properly. Um, Web Pub Sub now has MQTT support in preview. So remember, Azure Web Pub, Pub Sub is a fully managed service that enables real-time messaging between web apps. It's using WebSockets and the publish subscribe pattern. So if I needed any kind of real-time message exchange from between a client and a server, I could think a chat application, a live dashboard, just where I need that real-time, this is a great solution. So what it can now do is also use MQTT. So I can use WebSocket or the MQTT. Remember, MQTT is really good for low bandwidth or high latency or unreliable connections. So fun enough, IoT devices a lot of the time. Um, that is now an option. Azure Site Recovery for Linux now has Trusted Launch support. So Trusted Launch is available for the Gen 2 Azure Virtual Machines, which are UEFI based instead of BIOS based, that adds me the virtual TPM that enables features like secure boot. So there's an attestation and making sure no bad rootkits or malware has got in between the hardware and the operating system. So now if I have that, I can still use Azure Site Recovery to replicate that virtual machine to another zone or another region. And then OpenAI published these O1 Preview and O1 Mini models, and they're available on the Azure OpenAI servers as well. And really these are focused on more complex, um, more advanced reasoning tasks you may have. So they were trained to spend more time thinking through the task, thinking through the problem, before it would then actually start outputting the tokens and the response. So think complex code generation, advanced problem solving, complex document comparisons. These models are much better for that. Now, because it's spending more time on the reasoning, it takes longer before you start to see the output. But if I have those more complex tasks, then you can start playing around with these. And that was it. As always, I hope that was useful. Uh, until next video, take care.